Good afternoon, everybody. My name is John O. Wilson. I'm a project director and fishery scientist with the Nature Conservancy here in California. Today, I'll be presenting on some work I've done in collaboration with Steve Miller and Chris Costello at the Sustainable Fisheries Group, UC Santa Barbara. This work is part of the Sea Grant funded West Coast Ground Fish Project. In particular, today, I'll be talking about fishermen profits in mixed stock fisheries management. As we know, managing mixed stock fisheries can be a complicated task. Some stocks are highly productive, while others are less productive. We call these strong stocks and weak stocks, respectively. Managing to ensure that no stock is overfished in these mixed stock fisheries is difficult in that these species can overlap in space and be caught together with non-selective gear, such as trawls. What I'm going to present today is a conceptual framework for how to think about the costs and benefits of these alternative management approaches used in mixed stock fisheries. I'm gonna lay out hypotheses for the relationship between profits in the aggregate across the entire fishery versus the cost of selective targeting of productive species. So how costly it is to switch from non-selective gear such as trawls to selective gear such as hook and line and look at the relationship between the cost of that and aggregate fishery profits. I'm gonna look at this across four different types of management. The traditional limited entry approach, the limited entry approach with the spatial closure, an individual fishing quota approach, IFQ, as well as an IFQ with a spatial closure. I'll start with the limited entry approach. In a traditional limited entry system of management, with a cap on the number of vessels and a total allowable catch set for all fishermen, a situation typically arises in which fishermen compete against one another to catch as many fish as possible before it is either uneconomical to do so or a quota is met. Because of this, when the quota gets met for the least productive species, the entire fishery gets shut down and boats get tied up. And because of this race to fish to outcompete fellow fishermen, it is very rare that non-selective gear is, it will be used. Therefore, quotas get met early in the season and the fishery gets shut down. Switching to selective gear that can target productive species rarely occurs in these mixed stock limited entry fisheries, regardless of how costly it is to switch this gear. And that's what you're seeing here. So if it's regardless of whether it's cheap or expensive to switch from trawl gear to hook and line or trap gear, the aggregate fishery level profit is not going to change. And the logic behind this premise is that no individual fisherman will invest in a gear type that incurs costs if fellow fishermen continue to use non-selective gear and meet the quotas of the non-productive species, thus shutting the entire fishery down. The implementation of no-take marine protected areas or spatial closures in mixed stock limited entry fisheries has the potential to positively or negatively impact profit, depending on the dynamics of the system, the location of the reserves, the life history of the species, and other factors. So you'll see that here in this slide. When you add a no-take zone, aggregate fishery level profit can either decrease or it can increase, depending on those factors I just mentioned. But regardless of whether a no-take zone increases or decreases aggregate profit to the fishery, in a limited entry system. We hypothesize that the race to fish will still exist and there will still be little incentive for fishermen to switch gear to more selective gear and target those highly productive species. And therefore, aggregate profit will remain constant regardless of how costly it is to switch this gear. The third management, the third management system I'll discuss are individual fishing quotas. As we know, effective management systems are ones that provide appropriate standards and incentives to meet specific objectives, such as a reduction in the catch of unproductive or weak stock species. Individual fishing quotas, IFQs, are a form of rights-based management in which fishermen are allocated a portion of the total catch in the form of quota. Quota is given for every species or species group, including weak stocks and strong stocks. Quota pounds for those strong stock species can be, can be great, while quota pounds for unproductive species can be small. If a fisherman 
goes out and encounters one of those weak stock species and has relatively little quota for that species, this can incur a financial hardship on that fisherman. Thus, IFQ systems in mixed stock fisheries reduce the competition in race to fish and incentivize selective targeting of productive species for which there is ample quota. In this situation that I just described, the graph above compares the profit to be made at the aggregate fishery level in a limited entry system, that straight line, compared to an IFQ system under different costs associated with switching from non-selective to selective gear. And as you see, when the cost of targeting productive species is low, so when that cost of switching from trawl to hook and line gear is low, aggregate profits will always be higher in the IFQ system relative to a limited entry system. Profit then decreases when the cost of switching gear becomes higher. When you add spatial closures to an IFQ system, this can either increase or decrease profits depending on what that spatial closure would do to profits in a limited entry system. It's the same dynamics that are at play. But interestingly, this only occurs above a certain cost of switching from non-selective to selective gear. At low cost of targeting or switching from non-selective to selective gear, the species can be targeted without investing in new gear, primarily because they are presumably spatially disaggregated, these species, and exist in unique habitats or depths, which is what we're familiar with in the West Coast groundfish fishery. But above a certain cost of targeting, represented here by the dashed line, the spatial closure begins to provide either positive, represented here in that red line, or negative benefits, which I don't display here arising from these biological effects of protection of spawning stock biomass and other dynamics. So in conclusion, we've laid out four hypotheses for evaluating the costs and benefits of different management strategies in terms of the cost of switching from non-selective to selective gear and the benefits in terms of profits to the aggregate fishery. To summarize, we hypothesize that if an MPA does not improve profits in a limited entry system, then it will not improve profits in an IFQ system. Secondly, we hypothesize that if an MPA does improve profits in a limited entry system, then it will also improve upon profits in an IFQ system when the costs of targeting a species are high. Third, if the cost of switching from non-selective to selective gear is zero, then an MPA does not improve upon profits in an IFQ system. And lastly, if the costs of targeting are low, then an IFQ alone allows for the highest profits. So these four hypotheses are ones that we hope to test empirically as well as through simulation models in the coming months. We will keep you up to date on our progress. Thank you very much.